Well, good morning, everyone. Everybody can hear me? Yeah. I am on. Thank you, Gavin, our wonderful media team back there. Thank you. Um, so happy Mother's Day, everyone. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Now, as you can see, we're doing something a little different today. Uh, Pastor Brian gets a day off. Um, so we are going to just have some fun with some amazing women up here. And today we're going to focus on remembering God's faithfulness in our lives. God has been so good and so faithful. Sometimes when we are faithless, right? But he is faithful and he has come through in so many of our lives. And so today we're going to share some stories. There, are, there is a lot of power in the story, isn't there? And so um, I want to read for you Psalm 100, 1 through 5. Sh okay, fan here. <laughs> Psalm 100, 1 through 5. Shout to the... Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. So we all have stories of how God has met us through difficult seasons of our life and how he's brought us through. And these stories are not just for us. They are powerful testimonies, like that scripture says, for the generations to come. But it's our choice if we share those stories, if we share how God has been faithful to us. And the testimony is really of God's goodness and how he brought us through. And when we share that with one another, an amazing thing happens, kind of like what happens around the table every Sunday. You hear someone else's story, and wow, if God did it for them, he can do it for us, right? So we are really excited today to have these beautiful women with us, and these women are really pillars um, in this church, um, amazing women, all different ages, hey, different demographics, as you can see, different walks of life that we all come from. And so I want to introduce them to you. So let's see here. First, we have Sandy Cascaden. Sandy. <clears throat> we have Julia Solari. Madison Guzman. And Eleanor, I'm not going to even attempt it. Zab Zaburi? I just said it. And if you don't know Eleanor, you got to get to know Eleanor. Uh, Eleanor calls me Pastor Sin. I don't know about that, but Pastor Sin. She's always called me Pastor Sin. So, so we're going to start today with Sandy. And Sandy, how many, how many kids and grandkids do you have now? Oh, my gosh. Okay, I have... Are you on? Oh, Let's on? make sure here. Yes. Okay. Come on. Okay, I have <laughs> three children, and I have... Hmm, Let's see, five, six, seven, <laughs> um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, <laughs> eight grandchildren. Hopefully that one's not here, that person's not here today. <laughs> I have my one here today, the youngest, Rock. Mm -hmm. and, and Sandy, how many, now your mom lives with you, yes. and mom is going to be 100 years old this, this year. This is going to be a big party for her. That's Mama Thelma. She's awesome. And um, Sandy is from Hawaii. Yes. And um, which we all enjoy during Christmas when you do the pigeon uh, <laughs> dialect for us. It's amazing. If any of you haven't ever heard her speak in pigeon, it's crazy. Um, so Sandy, something happened a couple years ago. How many years has it been now? Two? Almost. Almost two years. In July. Two years ago, July, mm -hmm. that like radically changed your life. Radically changed my radically life. Radically changed your life. Mm -hmm. And I would love for you to briefly share that and just how God has continued to show his faithfulness yeah. during that season till now. Wow. Yeah, almost two years ago, I was in Hawaii with Robert. Robert is my husband. I still say he's my husband. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, he stayed two extra weeks, which is very, very unlike him because he doesn't like the heat. But he was there a month already, and he decided to stay two more weeks, which was the first of God's faithfulness. And then he came home, and when he got home, he got a letter from the VA, and that 
was God's faithfulness because they said that he was approved for burial. Now, who would have thought? It was not in our minds at all. Then he came to church here. It was his first time here. He wasn't going to make it lest uh, my daughter Trish cut his hair. And so she wasn't going to, and then she decided to. And so that was God's faithfulness. He came to church. He called. We talked to each other every day through the whole time of our marriage. We talked every day, at least a minimum of two times a day. We kissed each other goodnight every night. Couples, please do that. He told me he loved me every day and every night before we went to bed. He stood outside the house always, or I stood outside the house when he left, but always to say goodbye, and I'll see you soon. So couples, remember that. That is God's faithfulness. So he came to church, and guess what? He won. He said, I won. It was first Sunday, and on first Sunday, we have um, this really fun thing that we do where we have a little sticker under your announcement sheet, and we give away a gift. And um, he came by himself to church because Sandy was still in Hawaii, and um, Robert just happened to win the prize that day. It was really awesome. Right? It was that was on a awesome. Sunday. That was on a Sunday. Actually, it was in his seat. Someone sat in his seat, so he moved over like Robert would. <laughs> Gave up his seat for them. <laughs> yes, he did. And then he asked if he could give me the prize when I got home. And I said, no, 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 you, you, you get it. No, 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 you get it. You get it. We go back and forth. You get it. Who would have known God's faithfulness? So when I did get back, that was the gift that he gave me. Anyway, and then we move on. Um, I had no idea he was not sick. He wasn't sick. He wasn't. He didn't have a mm. cold, anything no. like that. Yeah. And uh, I call, like I said, I called him every day, or he called me. He missed the call. And so I asked Trish if she would go over. Um, she did go, and it was he, a really hard day. Yeah, but Robert God's asked. faithfulness was that she found Robert. And, his, and Kylie, his, our dog, was next to him the whole time. Uh, the police came, of course, and asked her if there was anybody around, like a pastor or somebody. And he went to get Pastor B and Pastor Sin. It was amazing. They came over, and they stayed with Trish. And the police and Trish and Pastor Sin and Pastor B prayed. God's faithfulness. Amen. And I, on the other side, when my daughter Trace and my son-in-love Gary called, I, I thought, ooh, something must be wrong. Maybe he's sick. Maybe something happened. Maybe he's in the hospital. But when I heard my daughter's voice say, Mom, it was that mom. You know how mothers are. We know. And when she said, I'm so sorry. I totally lost it, of course. I could not believe it. Um, everything was no, it can't be. On the other hand, though, Trish had the whereabouts to call the pastor in Hawaii, so they arrived right when I got that call. That was God's faithfulness. His faithfulness. I don't know if I told you that um, when he got home, he said that he had gotten a letter from the VA, right? right? Yeah. And that's God's faithfulness. So he was brought over to Hawaii, and he's at rest and at peace with Jesus Christ. His ashes are there, but he's not. <laughs> so everyone, yeah. That's what brings me through every day to know that he is with Jesus. And many of you may not know, but Robert used to sing in the choir, he used to sing solos at church as well. And he used to sing on the praise team. And now he's singing with Jesus. He's yeah. worshiping him. Amen. 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 And Sandy, was there a scripture or a promise from the Lord that you leaned into during that difficult time? There were so many scriptures. I can't begin to tell you. I wanted to actually write them down and bring them with me, but I did not. 
It is the word of God. And every day there is a scripture that will come up, that will uphold you. All these scriptures, God will never leave you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. God's comfort, that he comforts those who Amen. Lost. Amen. Mm-hmm. So the word of God, it's alive. It's yes. not just an ordinary book. So when we read it, it comes alive, and it gives us everything we need in the most difficult situations. Um, thank you for yes. sharing, Sandy. Yes. It's and just awesome. Yes. Um, m- m- lastly, one more word that I know that someday I'll see him again. Yes. That's our hope. Yeah. That is that's our, our hope. hope. When and we know what, Jesus. Pastor B preaches right. on that all the time. That's right. And he is so right. He's spot on. Yeah. We are going to be with our loved ones again, so make sure. Yes. Amen. Thank you. I love that. Some, uh, I've actually seen it written that Jesus is the great, it's the great hope that we have of our faith. That we, we are, this, this life here is temporal. We have an eternal life that we're going to live for those that know Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, this is Julia. And uh, Julia, Julia, how long have you been at the bridge now? Um, let's see, this summer, I thought it was 20 years, but it's going to be 19 years this summer wow. that we've been at the That's bridge. That's amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. We have a lot of um, amazing people in this church that have been here. Some of them before Brian and I were even here 23 years ago that have been here 40, 50 years in this church. This church has a lot of pillars of amazing people. So, so Julia, about four years ago, you were given a diagnosis that I know really rocked you. Can you share um, what that was and how God brought you through that? So um, in December, it'll be four years, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And um, I always knew that, you know, there was a little problem going on there because uh, I had uh, other lumps removed, but this one was a real big one. And so the doctor said that I had to have a mastectomy, um, which was, I was like, what? (laughs) How does this happen, you know? Um, And then I was also given the choice of having a double mastectomy for preventative reasons. Um, it was hard. You know, when you get diagnosed with cancer, all you see is this flashing word cancer and neon lights just overtaking uh, your brain and just the fear that comes over you. And so um, I was blessed to have people, a great team of friends, a great team of doctors that came around me and surrounded me Um, That was the blessing that I had. Um, And he also gave me a peace. It was a a peace that I was like, how could I be so afraid and yet feel so peaceful? I couldn't hear him. I couldn't feel him. You know, it's like when you're at a concert and the music is so loud and your friend is trying to talk to you and you're like, what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Well, that's how it was. The cancer word was screaming at me, and I couldn't hear the Lord. And I used to always come to church and say, please pray for me because I can't hear him. I can't hear him. So um, that was the second blessing was the peace. And then one day, the day before my surgery, Cynthia sends me a text, and she says, the Lord needs to meet with you. You need to sit quietly. And I thought, oh, thank God. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to hear you. I pulled out my notebook, and he started to download some stuff. Boy, did he download some stuff. And I was writing so fast, so fast. But then he said to me, this isn't for you. I want you to know this, that this isn't for you. And I'm like, what does that mean exactly? I don't understand. Well, little by little, um, after I had my surgery and after, you know, I was cleared, I was cleared, so seven days I was cleared, (laughs) praise God. Um, I didn't have to have any treatment. I was at stage zero, by the way. My tumor was two and a half inches long. I was at stage zero. When they removed the tumor and removed the lymph nodes and removed everything, I was still at stage zero. How does that happen? How does that happen, right? So I said to him, 
this is not for me. What does that mean? Well, people were coming up to me, people who never prayed before were coming up to me and saying, Julia, I was praying for you because you asked me to. I would tell people, random people, please pray for me, please pray for me, please pray for me. I knew they weren't Christians. I knew they didn't go to church. I didn't care. I'm like, I need you to pray for me. My atheist neighbor, 95 years old, Connie, says to me, because when I told her, she broke down to cry. She was just crying. And she said to me the next day, Julia, I called St. Catherine's Church and I had a candle lit for you. And then I said, ah, that's what you meant. It wasn't for me. It was for other people to come to you. So that was um, the blessing. That was another blessing. And it was worth it. I don't care because I am 100%. I am good. I don't, I don't resonate with cancer. I am victorious. And I, will, I, I don't ever have to worry about anything. I go for a checkup once a year. And I'm good. I never had any treatments. I never had to take another little medicine, pill, nothing. I was cured. I was cured. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God is good. Yeah. And the verse that, um, and I didn't hear any verses, right? I mean, the Lord, I couldn't hear from him. So after uh, all this, I was still very traumatized. So I was going to a therapist, and uh, the therapist gave me a verse. It was Romans 12.2. It's a portion of Romans 12.2. She said, you are being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the way that I do that is that I don't submit to cancer. I don't accept that. I am not. That does not define me. I am not defined by cancer. I am Julia, and I am victorious. Amen. So good, inspiring, right? So inspiring. And I pray that as you're listening to this, you know, life hits. Even though you love Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, life hits. And it hits all of us all the same. But like Pastor Brian said during worship today, what is your foundation built on? Is it built on the rock? Is it built on Jesus? To where when life hits, he's going to help you get through that. You can depend on him and his word. Amen? Amen. So, everyone, this is Brian, uh, Brian, Madison Guzman. That's her husband, by the way. <laughs> Madison. And Madison and Brian have two beautiful boys that are over in the classrooms, Asher and Noah. And um, I, I remember when um, Madison and Brian walked in on their first day. Uh, my son was home from college, and he just happened to be sitting at the table with me, Maxwell, and you guys um, sat down, and you, I think you were just fresh out of college. It seemed like you, you, you never age, so um, <laughs> she's gorgeous. So, um, but I know your story a little bit and that you didn't come to know God until college. You did not grow up in a Christian home. You did not have Christian parents. And so how has God really met you in raising your family and with your marriage and even just know how to live for him if you never had it exampled for you? Thank you, Pastor Cynthia. Great questions. Um, church family, I'm so happy to be able to testify with you today about what God has done in my life through his faithfulness. So um, I'm 31. Brian and I have um, been at this church for many years now. And my son Asher is almost five. Noah, yeah, I know. Y'all remember when I was pregnant with him. Uh, Noah is one and a half. I was raised Catholic and always believed in God, but didn't know Jesus or the intimacy of a relationship with him. I was also raised in a broken family. Every year from about the age 12, uh, the only gift I asked for for Christmas was a family photo because that's not something that I had anymore. And it wasn't until adulthood that I realized I was really asking for a healthy, functioning family. God has been faithful to <laughs> bring that to me, that I didn't have what I wanted growing up or what I needed in those ways. But he has also healed me through the work of going to a Christian therapist of the pains I had in childhood and he has fulfilled the longings for a healthy family now that I get to be the mother of. Um, I also, growing up, didn't think I would be married or have kids because I didn't see it done well. It wasn't modeled for me. Um, Brian and I also thought that kids were more of a burden than anything else. 
but God was faithful to teach me the truth where I had believed lies growing up. God says in Psalm 127 that children are a gift from him. Brian and I are raising our boys in accordance with scripture. God gave me eyes to look for wisdom in raising our kids because the cry of our hearts is for them to know Jesus like we do. And he's given me eyes to read things that I often overlooked. As, wow, this is tangible advice for raising children. God has also given us godly counsel. Many men and women, spiritual mothers and fathers, that we've gotten to ask and see they did something well that we want to replicate. Yeah. We got their advice. And then God has also given us wisdom uniquely as the parents of our boys. Brian and I say to each other all the time, we have a good life because we're sitting in the blessing of God's faithfulness. That's right. Amen. As God has been faithful to bless us with a family and bless me with the family I always wanted, he's been faithful and he will continue to be faithful to see us through the difficulties that that brings. Amen. 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 That's awesome. Is there, is there a scripture, Madison, or um, something that comes to mind, maybe something someone prayed for you that you just lean into? Because let's face it, right? You have two toddlers at home, and I remember I would lock myself in the bathroom once in a while. <laughs> Not going to lie. We're at church. Um, <laughs> this is the only privacy I had with the little fingers under the door. Mom, where are you? Um, right? Um, so is there, is there something that you lean into in those hard, hard days? Yes, I think I have two scriptures I'll share. The first is a long one, and it's taken me years that I've been working on memorizing it, but it's all of Isaiah 43 and 44 verses 1 through 5, um, talking about not to fear. God loves me. He's called me by name. I am his. He is making a new way. He's bringing life where there are dead things. And we get to write, um, call ourselves by the name of the Lord. We belong to him. We call ourselves by the name of Israel. The second one um, is Zephaniah 3.17. And I was very sick in my pregnancy with Noah and bedridden for weeks and um, nauseous, vomiting all the time. And um, some mom friends that I was in a Bible study with and I were reading a book together about Christian moms and um, this is where I learned the verse, Zephaniah 317. And I wrote it on a sticky note and pasted it to the back of our toilet. So every time I was vomiting, I was also reminded that the Lord, my God, is with me. He's a mighty warrior who saves. Wow. You see how you have to use God's word? You have to speak it over your life. She said, I, this is... This is who I am. This is, I am victorious. I am a daughter of the Most High King. I am his. He knows me by name. Those, those are from the word of, words of God. The words of God inspired for your life that you have to say over and over to yourself. That you sometimes don't believe, but you speak them over yourself because it's the truth. It's the truth of how you were designed and how you were created and how he wired you. But this life undoes that. So we have to bring it back into alignment and speak those things over ourselves the way that it was created to be, right? Amen, amen, awesome. Well, this is Eleanor. <laughs> Eleanor's a little nervous. <laughs> Eleanor's one of my favorite people in the whole world. <laughs> Everybody's. You have, to, you have to have a conversation with her to really get the best of her. Um, Eleanor, a, a few years ago, we were in a discipleship class. I had been going to church with you for the longest time, and part of the assignment for the discipleship class was to come up and tell your story of, um, of how you kind of came to know Jesus or what he's done in your life. Eleanor got up there and said this testimony, and I was floored. I had been going to church with this woman forever. I had no idea about her story, and I felt so honored to know you in that moment, and I just know everyone's going to be so blessed, but Eleanor, you're from the Philippines. And how many years ago was it that your sister was sick and that you came out? That was 1991. Okay. And um, 
coming from a, a worship conference in LA. I came home at 11.30 in the morning, uh, in the evening, and she was crying when she saw me. I said, what's going on? She said, I have leukemia. Mm -hmm. So to make a long story short, tests, tests, I was declared the most qualified person to donate my bone marrow because her bone marrow was producing cancerous white cells. So donating her my bone marrow, and after that, I thought that was it. But God has other plans, and with the pressure of every day, you know, going to the hospital, visiting her, I just kept, you know, my faith on the Lord that <clears throat> crying, driving to the hospital, crying when I get there, all the way crying. But God honors our tears. He knows the language of tears, that it is not for naught. And he, he loves it. He cares for it. And never in my life have I ever really prayed on my knees. My knees, not my knees, you know. Because <laughs> I had three nieces and one nephew. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happened was uh, my, my bone marrow rejected her after three months or so. So I was left with four minors, and I was the only major. Yes, and, so her, uh, his, her sister had four sister children. My sister had four children. They were all minors, and their dad was in the Philippines. He was a professional soldier, so he could not be here. And then my sister asked me if I could stay and help her, because I guess she must be feeling something already. And of course, she left, but what was really what really gave me the joy was that moment when we were called to go to her bed to, because they, they feel that that was the end coming and i could see the blood her blood pressure you know like she was really fighting for her life but i told her while i was looking at the the machine i was telling her ed uh, don't you worry about anything. I said, the Lord Jesus will take care of you. If you see that hand extended towards you, that is Jesus' hand. And I want you to get hold of his hand. And he is just welcoming you where you should be going home to. And I, I told her, I said, I will read to you Psalm 23rd. And after that, I said, now I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. And I want you to pray with me. Let every word be your word of prayer to God. And when I said amen, I saw a big tear rolling down her cheek. I forgot to say that she was in coma. So she didn't know or, you know, she, she, I was not able to talk to her. But the last sense that would go away is our sense of hearing when you are in coma. So instead of crying that she passed on, I was filled with joy because God's promises are true. That when, when you give your life to the Lord, when, you know, I really, I sincerely believed that she received Jesus in her heart. And that big tear was for me the sign that She's in good hands. Amen. And I Amen. praise the Lord for and, that. And, and there's more to the story because as Eleanor shared, she had four minors that she stayed here and raised for her entire life. Her, yes. She has raised her sister's yes. children. <laughs> from, from four kids, now I have, I claim, 10 grandchildren. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and Eleanor has remained single to do that. She sacrificed for her sister. Yes. And that, when I heard this story, I thought to myself, I don't, that's sacrificial love right there. Yeah. That for your sister yes. to raise those children as your own, to work to provide for them, mm -hmm. and now to reap the blessing of yes. grandchildren, and they right. all consider her mama. Yes. So, isn't that amazing? Yes. 
It's amazing. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus, right? He's faithful. He is faithful from generation to generation. And you're going to tell me that her kids and grandchildren aren't going to believe a God that did what he did in bringing her into their life and raising them. It, it affects generations, our decisions to follow God and our faith in God. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So um, great stories, right? What a way to spend Mother's Day. I was thinking to myself as we speak things over ourselves, I know, as Pastor Brian said during worship, um, for a lot of people for Mother's Day can be difficult. Maybe some of you have lost your mom. Maybe some of you want to be a mom. I've walked through that journey with women. Um, a lot of you, maybe your children aren't, aren't uh, really living life the way you'd like them to. Um, but that's where faith in God comes in. That's where our prayer life kicks in. I was even thinking today, uh, actually yesterday, <laughs> it's kind of funny, my husband and I, we, we got some new chickens in our house. So I've been on chicken watch because I'm, I'm incorporating a flock. So if anybody of you knows chickens, I have a couple older hens and then some younger chickens. So you have to make sure they don't kill each other. It's, it's, it's really like a whole sermon right there on how to be a mom. So I'm out there in a chair watching with my broom, hitting them so they don't beat each other up when they're squawking at each other. It's been quite a couple days. So this morning I was up, well, last night, my husband and I had to go in there. He, he does this against his will. This is my hobby, but he's along the ride with me. And so I'm in there because they're young and they don't know how to go up in the ramp to the coop. So I'm having to chase down these four chickens to pop them into the thing. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? I'm not an empty nester. Do you know what I am? I'm a bird launcher. That's what I am. I'm not going to sit around and feel sorry that my five kids are off doing what God's called them to do, all in different states with my grandkids, our grandkids, and enjoying life today all in church. I could sit here and feel sad for myself on Mother's Day. Oh, they're not here for me. No, you know what? We're bird launchers. We launched them out of that nest to go live life and to live life for God. Amen? So it's all how you, think, it's all how you look at it. It's all your perspective. It's all when, when life is handed to you, how are you going to deal with it? And it's really in the presence of God, right? Going to that quiet place where he can meet you, where you can cry, where you can shout, where you can be upset. He, he's a big God. He can handle it. But he also wants to give you what you need to get through it. Amen? Amen. So we are going to uh, sit around the table, and we're going to do table talk. And um, at this church, it's really awesome because you get to hear stories. Um, of other people around the table. And don't feel like you, if you're visiting, you don't have to share. Um, our church knows how to talk. So we're, you're going to be all right. Um, and we're going to just share about God's faithfulness in our own lives. But can we just thank these amazing women? Go ahead and enjoy Table Talk.